transition. And this is hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is harder than I thought. So, yeah, no, I think that's a, a really good point talking about um, being your own man, not idolizing people. And that's, again, one of the things that I really appreciated about discovering your work and discovering the church is because that helped me in ways I can't even put into words. You know what I mean? That's why I am so vocally a proponent of like all the people online doing this stuff. Because I, I mean, if somebody would have came to me five years ago and told me, oh, you're going to be a Christian. I wouldn't even believe them. You know what I mean? I wouldn't even know what that meant. I would have thought, cause I was raised Protestant. I went mm -hmm. to Catholic school. I mm -hmm. thought I understood all that stuff, you know? And when I, when I came across your debates, I realized like I know nothing. I know absolutely nothing about Christianity. I know Billy Bob's Baptist strip mall church, you know, with the Starbucks in the lobby. That's, that's what I knew. Or I knew, you know, uh, the, the Roman Catholic school that I went to. That's all I knew. And then when I started to see you debating people, that held atheist views or held, you know, Gnostic views, the people that I thought were the intellectuals, the people I thought were the intellectually superior, you know, worldview. I realized these, this is like really dumb. This, this is like a really on its face, dumb position that I could not see for most of my life. That's valuable work, dude. That's really good. Yeah, I think philosophy, yeah, the, the good part of Christian philosophy is that it serves pretty much just to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. It serves to show the inadequacies and failures of autonomous and, and you know, human focused uh, philosophies. And that's about all it can do. I mean, it's just kind of a sign that points you in the right direction. And so, right. um, you know, that's why I've always said I'm not anybody's spiritual father. I don't give you spiritual advice on your life. That's a right. that's not my role. Right. And I learned that because, uh, you know, cult leaders, gurus, all these crazy cringe, you know, mind control lunatics, yeah. people that are in delusion, um, they have this God complex, they have this desire to control. And one of the things about orthodoxy that I think is appealing is that <clears throat> there's always a checks and balance on authority. And so there's no abuse. There's not ideally people can theoretically yeah, abuse authority in orthodox church, but I'm saying typically the way the system is structured is that <clears throat> it's a lot uh, more conducive to avoiding, uh, authority abuse due to the fact that, you know, everybody kind of is checks and balanced relationship with other people, with spiritual father, with priests, bishops, all that it's synodal. So there's like, you know, there's not one person that can just destroy everything. Right. There's, right. there's firewalls and checks and balances. And so that's why, you know, I understand as a lay person that, you know, my role is limited. I'm fine with that. I, I, I don't have any desire to try to tell people, you know, what to do Same. with their personal life or, who they, uh, you know, need and to, much respect you know. to those people, because that is a, a, a terrifying responsibility that I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine being a priest. I can't even imagine being a clergy and, and having that responsibility on you to to be able to give people those kinds of advices. You know, I much prefer the, the pointing the way, you know what I mean? So I, I hear you there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I mean, that's why, you know, I don't really feel too bad. You know, if I was going into clerical work or something like that if i was going to be in the, in the priesthood you know maybe in that situation i think you know like luke kindrat when he did that he kind of took down and right. turned off his his channel in terms of like political stuff yeah and well, that that's... makes sense and you know if i was going to be in the clergy i think a lot of the comedic stuff or the you know the stuff the goofy stuff may it would it would be inappropriate really to be combining right. those things but uh, you know, I have no pre no desire to be clergy. I have no pretensions that I'm uh, anybody's spiritual father. So I don't feel bad or wrong about, you know, continuing to do the type of, you know, combination analysis of geopolitics and movies and you philosophy. Shouldn't, and you shouldn't feel bad about that stuff because that is what makes it partially so effective is the fact that, I mean, look, orthodoxy, especially in America, as we all know, is a very small percentage, right? We, we are a very small minority in America, even though we're growing, it's still small. There's not that many people out there looking up orthodox, you know, uh, apologetics, but there is a lot of people looking up film analysis. There is a lot of people looking up geopolitical stuff, conspiracy stuff, all that stuff. And just even if you're not even mentioning the church, just from being an orthodox Christian, that's the worldview that you come from. That's the front you have. And so by people engaging in these other types of content that you put out, you're introducing them to orthodoxy, which again, like a lot of people have never even experienced in their entire lives in America.